So welcome everyone. This is a Latinx Student Association event at the University of the District of Columbia. And we have a keynote speaker today who is Frida Larios, and I'm gonna read her bio and she's going to be talking. So Frida Larios is an urban indigenous um, descendant and pluridiverse typographic artist. She holds a Bachelor of Arts from University College Falmouth, um, Falmouth in England and a Master of Arts in Communication Design from Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design, University of the Arts, London. While in London, the former Central American Beach Volleyball Gold Medalist taught at the London College of Fashion in uh, Camem Camberwell, sorry, Camberwell <laughs> College of Arts. She has been a regenerative workshop and educational education leader for over 20 years. She's currently a adjunct professional lecturer in visual literacy at American University in Washington, DC, guided by community guardians and collective Animales Interiores, New Maya Visual Language, the community buried an erupting volcano in three codex titles, rich and facilitate ancestral indigenous visual languages, spiritual and graphical essence through intercultural letters, symbols, textiles, stones, walls, trees, immersing and emerging from place, love, and intergenerational community. The titles are based on the logographic principles of ancestral Maya and Nahua hieroglyphics, Ladios murals, installations, and ofrendas are widely displayed in Washington, DC, and have been exhibited in Central and South America, Europe, and Asia. Ladios works and text have been featured in AP News, Telemundo, Smithsonian Magazine, BBC Radio, Getty Images, Agence France Press, uh, Yahoo News, Print Magazine, El Faro, Career International, Tashin, Thames, and Hudson, among others. So welcome, welcome. We are honored to have you. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, uh, Doctora Ada. And it's great to see uh, um, a small and amazing group of students and uh, their colleague Selvan. Uh, Professor Selvan Wildron too. Uh, so great uh, new faces and um, old friends from UDC as well. Um, I'm gonna share my screen right now and I'm not sure if I pr press the play button, if um, it's gonna work. So I'm gonna do one test and then otherwise I'm just gonna not play the presentation. Does that make sense? because it seems like the sound sometimes doesn't work. Did it work? Yeah, yes. it works fine. The same strange thing is that that's not the sound, but anyway. It's gonna play. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play it again. One, two, three. One moment. I'm not gonna play it then because there's another sound interfering. <gasps> Sorry, okay, here we go. There's someone coming in the room. And no, don't worry about it. I got it. Okay. And if there's chat messages, you can read them out because I won't be, be paying attention. No worries. Just go ahead. The artifacts of a culture are transient. Codices burn. Buildings decay. Language can be lost. But a narrative once told lives forever.
and narrative one's told lives forever, regenerating from my ancestral seed. Uh, on this day, Kech, an unseated Nakonchak, Anacostan, Piscataway territory at UDC and UDC Latin X by Zoom. <laughs> Land acknowledgement or territory acknowledgement is not enough or country acknowledgement like they call it in um, Australia, uh, but it's a start. This is the immortal cacao tree. Yektayua, Muchian Mehemet, Nahanutugai, Frida, Wanusuntugai, Larios, Naha Propronombre, She, Her, Ella, Nutechan, Siwatewagan, Santana, Cusgatan, El Salvador. Good evening, everyone. My name is Frida Larios. My surname is, my, sorry, my name is Frida. My surname is Larios. My pronouns are she, her, ella, and my community is Siwatewagan, Santana, Cusgatan, El Salvador. I'm a mother of two and wife of another and a great, great, great granddaughter, mixed descendant of Nahua, Maya, Afro, Spanish. Tutagamatibis, Ganeta Pianemit, Igman Ipalwe Tutayu, Aviayala, Gan Deshmagat Ini Escolo Nakochang, Ana Costan Piscataway. So that was the recognition of um, the lands where we are holding this um, safe space and a uh, um, before we heard and we um, saw the um, offering to the water of the Anacostia River, guarded and protected by the Nacochan and Anacostan and Piscataway original peoples of this land. And um, I offered those words in my native language uh, to, to the sister nations that have stood here on unceded territory. So I was born in 1974, and this is my El Salvadoran Nunan, mi madre salvadoreña. And my indigenous community, when there were active indigenous communities in El Salvador was in Cihuatevara, Santa Ana, three generations ago. And this is my great grandmother, Sabina on the right. And this is my um, grandmother right here uh, on, the, on the right also. And her sisters, my uh, great, uh, sorry, uh, aunt grandmothers on the left. Um, so I grew up in um, Antiguo Cusgatan in that neighborhood. Um, I went out of all places to a German school. I attended a German school because it was like half a block away from uh, my home. And I don't have any German <laughs> descendants, <laughs> descendancy, but um, I think that's when I started at least becoming interested in, in languages and in the graphic language of our, um, my, my ancestors. Uh, and then uh, when I left the school, I became a professional beach volleyball player and participated in the beach volleyball world tour and won a Central American, not a gold medal, a Central American only games gold medal, sorry, the bio. Uh, um, and this is in my old life. <laughs> and that helped me um, see how other, other, you know, traveling and being able to uh, tour uh, through this sport helped me see how pr pride in other um, uh, athletes and um, just reflect on, you know, in my own. Uh, in my own pride. But that was just a start. Then I went to Cornwall in 1998. 
and, and this is Cornwall in the southwest coast of England. And I went there because I thought I could play beach volleyball as well, and as well as practicing art and design. But I was totally mistaken because it was a very, 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 very cold place, <laughs> even though there was no snow like here in DC. It, it was very, very hard. It was only rain and I couldn't practice beach volleyball at all ever, uh, at least when I was there. And so I had to dedicate to, uh, you know, learning the craft of uh, art and design. And in this new strange place as an immigrant, and these are these were my mates in the bachelor's in communication design. Here we were preparing some art project props, like you all do these days. I know, <laughs> dear students or former students, and my you know current students too. Uh, then after the wars, I enrolled in the type and language pathway uh, of the master's degree at Central St. Martin's College of Art and Design in, in London this time. This was the countryside or the seaside, Falmouth. And now I was in London and um, again, uh, very far away, very detached from, you know, my own community and my culture, but that helped me also uh, look, uh, look inside by looking outside and just seeing is how um, the, the British, uh, as well as colonizing the entire world, except uh, for Latin America, but they also managed to preserve their own heritage right, plus colonize and invade other uh, territories. Uh, but what was interesting is to see that their lineages weren't broken like ours, um, you know, broken by intergenerational trauma, uh, genocide, uh, ethnocide, uh, ling linguistically, everything, but they managed to preserve and all the, you know, the, how would you say, medieval presses and uh, letter presses, everything is intact for, you know, uh, 1500 years in some of the schools over there. So that helped me learn uh, uh, the love for craft, even though it was not, not my, uh, you know, uh, culturally affirmative for me. And I had peers from Australia, Bulgaria, Greece, Wales, who engage in some projects that I'm gonna tell you about, uh, similar to mine in type and language. And this was the class of 2005 um, outside, outside the mall in London. It's called the same here as in DC. And we, it was like 80 peers. Central St. Martins is, um, um, a very respected school in in Europe here, and people don't know it, but uh, it's a sister school of the Royal College of Arts. Over there, I lived and studied in Holborn, where my Central St. Martins was located for nearly 100 years, and also the British Museum with some of the most intricate carved lintels from the Maya world. So stolen pieces, stolen heritage in the museums, uh, this is learning, right? I, I, I was just admiring them, and then you you relearn and know that it's, it's stolen from you know our lands. Uh, but I was walking one day in the streets of London, and um, you know I I saw a, um, above to the double deckers, and on my feet also to the signage and the wayfinding and just realizing that I could read and we can read bus and there's a pictogram here, right? A bike, you know, we read bike even though we're not reading it in a Roman letter forms, lane. And this was the start of the, um, a, let's call the life project. Uh, that I would be pursuing uh, up until today. 
Oops. Okay. Um, so these were some of the initial first um, iterations uh, in gouache. I still paint in gouache to this day. Some of the, the books that I bound learning the craft of binding, not by my ancestors or our artists ancestors, but by the uh, expert book binders in, uh, you know, in England. And even though we were master book binders, <laughs> also 2000 years uh, ago. So in 2006, um, I uh, was given a, an award for the student master's project uh, for this called the body of works. And uh, I even received a, a, a trophy <laughs> that was designed specially and all that felt really, really great. And uh, just um, instill that pride that um, you know one needs uh, when one hasn't been able to to grow in and in, in being uh, uh, re, you know being taught your own uh, ancestry and your own culture and this was one of the pieces uh, that I crafted while I was um, to finish the master's thesis is part of that uh, collection or body of works. And this is the first exhibition I had over there at the embassy of El Salvador in London. And um, this piece still is there uh, in the uh, board meeting area. And, you know, I'm still to return and, <laughs> and see it again one day. Um, but then something happened, I went back to, you know, I wanted to, I wasn't uh, wanting to live in London anymore. It felt very cold still. Like those days I showed you, it still felt like that every day. People were very, um, how would you say? It was different, you know, cold and not very friendly and not very warm, etc. even though I had great experiences and learnings there. And so I went back to Mesoamerica to live in the mountain of Copan, Honduras, where I met um, uh, my, my husband, my family, my current husband and uh, 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 the father of my two boys. This was Copan, Honduras. Uh, where we were living. And this is the Maya site was right there. Uh, you know, we were living in the mountain right here, right there. <laughs> and we could just walk down to the site uh, any day, any time. And uh, we were living also in community with um, the Maya Chorti uh, and because my husband has, uh, is half Honduran. And uh, this is Doña Teresa, who is one of the uh, uh, community uh, members, uh, or was because she passed, unfortunately. Yeah, over there, she was making tortillas. This is a photograph by Tyler, my partner, and with interventions by myself. And this is Don Mauro. Uh, the day he was uh, harvesting his, his maize, and this is at the site, you know, just talking with, also with, uh, as well as, you know, guided by the community, also by, uh, uh, this is Giovanni, the guide on the right, the guy, one of the guys and birders, bird guide and bird uh, friend <laughs> and an archeologist, Eva. So it was a great, beautiful time to reflect and um, connect. Our footsteps keep warm and ancient lineage of birth, life, death, and rebirth. As artists, it is the, this, this deep memory that we seek to activate and regenerate. Here we see one of the pieces. This is a collaboration with a Maori 
uh, artist, but the piece below is made out of the boulders of the river in collaboration with Marco Tullio, sorry, the, the sizing is odd, a stone carver, master stone carver. There's another video here, but I won't play it. And this is Don Mundo, who is um, another master um, jade carver. And uh, we create these pieces uh, in collaboration. And when I was living there, we used to, you know, uh, have a workshop together. And now, uh, well, we live apart because um, I live part in Washington, part in El Salvador, but we still collaborate by phone. <laughs> uh, then um, I wrote this book while I was in Copan and illustrated a title new, new Maya visual language because uh, it's just re pertaining to the graphics. And I'm just gonna quickly go through all these slides uh, because there's a lot to cover still with your own art and I don't wanna rob all the time. And this is the, the Mesoamerica uh, and all the uh, sacred places and sites at the moment, this is El Salvador, as you can see down here, Joya de Seren, Tazumal, Honduras, there's Copan. So we were a people, uh, um, you know, without a geopolitical con modern borders. Guatemala and the highlands share with the Be Be Belizean highlands and the Mexican highlands. And this piece is at the Don Bartonox Museum and uh, we can see the artist wearing a water lily headband, headdress, sorry. The headdress represents that he was a scribal uh, artist to the king. And here we see someone holding a mirror onto him on the right and someone, another person assisting or subordinate uh, behind the, the mirror holder. So the artists were kings, king queens, and everything in between. <laughs> uh, polyvalence, this is one of the phenomena in the writing, conflation, where one pictoglyph means a, a is written in different ways, but means the same. This is five different ways of writing Balam, which it means Jaguar. And the last one right here uh, is, is read Balama, so it's only read in syllables. So what oh, the system I'm gonna introduce you quickly again <laughs> is only written in logos. So in logos are the drawings that you see something and they, it represents something to you. The syllables don't represent a hand if you see a hand, they represent a syllable, right? The logograms are different than the syllablegrams. And this is one of the um, creations, it's an integration of ancestral language plus a, a contemporary um, pictograms. This is the code of line, the color line, uh, code. And this is a collection of glyphs or pictoglyphs. Uh, fire plus mountain means the erupting volcano. Fire plus stone means the lava bomb. Your thought house, nah, first or mother. Winnick means seed or son and sheep, young man. Uh, create the family at home and so on and so forth. This is sewing, which is uh, brula, beans, and cham to harvest, to grasp, and uh, creates the sewing. So then I created an email, another collection. I'll show you then I'm, we moved to Berkeley. <laughs> Move again, and this is one of the puzzles I created when my first child was born. The green child of Mother Earth is called, and we relocate to Washington. Then in 2013, um, we 
at the UNESCO World Heritage Site or Sacred Site of Hoya de Seren uh, becomes 20 years of being an UNESCO World Heritage Site. And this is the Temascaldas, the sauna bath uh, uh, guided by the uh, elderly or spiritual guide. Uh, or so-called shaman uh, at the site, I, you know, our, our ancestral site. Um, but this was 14, uh, 500 years after Christ. So 1400 years ago, this site was preserved and we were celebrating that. And we created these murals around the museum. And this is the book written for that narrative. And this book is still, alive <laughs> i say that because it's in the third edition and it's still being you know uh, more collaboration with communities uh, to be able to amplify its messages and uh, indigenize it a word that i'm not sure i like but it's what it's been going through because it's a decolonial process of myself and also of my of my work right of my art and uh, this is the glossary and parts. These are some of the pages of, of the book, just uh, to show you a sample. Anyway, here is the book. I think most of you have seen. <laughs> and, and then these are some of the um, Black and Indigenous Lives Matter uh, murals. And we have one of the collaborators here who is um, Itai Rogers Fett. I hope he's around or maybe not. Um, anyway, uh, I'll show you quickly. This is Vanessa Ian mural uh, with uh, Musa Swala. Some of you know him because he's been to UDC to give talks in my class. And Selva knows him from Carlos Rosario, El Tamarindo, uh, on Florida and U Street, also with collaboration uh, with Itai. And this is at Carlos Rosario in the Culinary Academy. Inside the Culinary Academy, this is where we met with Musa and we were starting our, our collaboration as a duo. And then uh, by the end, Itai has been also integral part. And this is the last one at Adams Morgan in at the um, Mary Reed Elementary. And I'll just flick through visuals right now. We're almost done. Uh, at the American University Museum Cats and Art Center. And this is the entrance through the, the, the mouth of the serpent at the American University Museum to a door installation with vinyl, called vinyl. So, uh, in Adobe Illustrator, if you wonder, and then oriented by the, the, the cutter of the vinyl, by the file. Uh, Animales Interiores is the latest catalog of works in, my, in the book, yet, um, you know, latest, and I, I created this, we created this while I was still in Copan, Honduras in uh, 2011. So it was a long time ago because in between I've had two human beings. <laughs> so that's, uh, how would you say, I haven't developed like a, you know, I've been developing like one by one, but not a whole body of works like this, this ones. So that's the book. And here in Washington, uh, we, also create a community um, ofrendas, offerings, or altares, altars um, for the Day of the Dead. Uh, uh, that is um, uh, on first and second, and even third of November, uh, from south to north of Avi Ayala, uh, Latin America. And this is at Mount the Mount Pleasant. this last year. So we are resisting just by existing, by reclaiming a space like this space. We are not just resisting, we are revolutionizing. A story once told lives forever. 
Netaitu Palnah Nina Seukti. Thank you for listening to my visual story, Uninemi Sexempa. On a seated Natich Honshak, Anna Costan, Piscaraway Territory. And uh, thank you very much. Susul Padiush. Ciao. Nukum Pawa. So it's open for questions. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you so much. Actually, mm -hmm. before the questions, I wanted to introduce everyone to Maria Avila, who organized this. So let, let's uh, uh, let me stop the PowerPoint so we can see Maria because Maria, she um, she has organized this. She's a UDC art student. And I wanted to, for her to talk to us about why she did this. Um, I, let me see, I think there's a problem with the mic. But yeah, so if, if Maria can talk a little bit about why she invited Frida, why she organized this, and then we go to the Q&A after that. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Um, and thank you, uh, Professor Frida and Professor Ada and Diana. Uh, for helping me organize this event. Um, I will also like uh, give a special thank you for uh, some of my friends who are alumni at UDC uh, participating in this event. Um, well, the reason why I decided to do this is because um, I believe that there is, um, we need to start uh, creating a bigger sense of belonging and community at UDC. Um, it's really interesting to like when I was talking to some of my uh, friends, um, they didn't know about the Latin Association and everything that they're doing at UDC. And I feel like it's super important to put this association in, into the spotlight. Um, and I believe that art is an excellent way to express ourselves. And um, sometimes it can be, you know, powerful either like if, if it's for a, a political movement or, um, just to like transformation in general for communities, it, it can be um, a, a, a fantastic tool. So that's what I wanted just to like, you know, um, start doing this event to like, you know, start mixing the community, um, constructing bridges and uh, integrating to um, my art community and my like my Latinx community. Um, and I'm very, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, we have this amazing participation um, in the contest and in the event. Um, I would like to open the floor for anyone who has questions for Professor Frida um, about her artwork, her experience as a Latina in the um, in the art, like you know, in, in the arts and everything. A space for solidarity. Mm -hmm. Two, right, Maria. And I, I believe other people in the audience that maybe collaborating with you and if they want to say something that would oh, yeah. also be it's nice, nice. <laughs> to, to learn about the collaborations with the collaborators. Uh, he was there. I thought you weren't there. Mm -hmm. I do have questions. So basically, Maria was asking, like, what is it like to be a Latina in the art world? What do you have to navigate? So what are the challenges? Um, so what are your perspectives on that? Well, for, first of all, is um, the uh, experience as an immigrant mm -hmm. for so long. Uh, so I left uh, El Salvador in uh, tw almost 20 years ago. And um, it, that after the war, the war had just ended and um, even though a lot of uh, uh, these uh, people in the DMV uh, immigrated during the war, I came after, right? But it's um, it's not it's not easy because of of the disconnection all the time with you know the the, the native land and um, family, community, etc. But we we resist all the time, and we, you know, everyone who's here who's an immigrant um, knows uh, what that means. Uh -huh. We we fight against uh, a, a predominantly white institutions most of the time, and so we we 
uh, you know, we're always under and not uh, leading, for example, in some spaces. Uh, so, and uh, well, but apart from that, uh, Washington is a good place for um, Mm, recognition of the of diverse cultures and and that is is an opportunity because there's a diaspora of you know different communities and just maybe my I, I, how would you say advice if I can give any is to to look for that those communities your community in the diaspora that makes 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 you stronger mm -hmm. And you, you know, if your identity, if you know where you come from, then you know where, where you're going. That's where, where, for me, it all starts there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, we have some art from everyone. I don't know if there's, you know, I'm just worried about the time. <laughs> uh, oh, no worries. I just wanted to like make sure that nobody else had any other questions. Um, I wanted to so like maybe give uh, a chance just in case somebody was typing something and they can also write the questions in the chat as well because i could yeah, keep I asking but yeah we can uh you, we can uh, um take questions from the chat i wanted to ask you about the process of recovering that ancestral language uh on those ancestral images because sometimes it's really difficult because of the process of colonization and something so many things have been lost uh some languages have been lost in the case of where i'm from the language is not taught i think maybe it's starting to get taught again, uh, but there's a loss and sometimes there are many gaps. And sometimes you have to fill in the gaps with creativity, right? Because the history is not sufficient because the history is usually written by the conqueror and represented by the conqueror. So how reliable is that representation of indigenous communities? So how do you uh, navigate that? Mm. Well, um... I think talk to to elderly, um, if not your own, because in El Salvador it's a different, how would you say, phenomena, because we've lost all native land, decimation, total decimation of all indigenous land. So there's no communal land. And that's very hard. And that's why uh, we're more displaced and we we've lost, we've been stripped more, right? Uh, uh, in terms of, like you say, language, in terms of traditional dress, um, uh, communal ways of collaborating, etc. But it's there, like Hoya de Seren, that, that's the place that I showed there, that is archaeological place, but it was a sacred place where a spiritual guide was uh, having you know guiding a community and doing uh rituals and offerings uh, even though it was 1400 years ago i would say you know tap in tap into your blood memory because it's it's strong and it's um it lasts generation after generation so we are not we are not who we are now we are who we were before us and um, it's thousands of years, you know, and so, so that is. Uh, yeah, no, so like, like, wow. yeah, so that's how you like actually collected all this information, talking to the elders, uh, going to the community, interviewing, check in. Yeah, good question. Uh -huh. No, not entirely. Uh, I started as an academic. So and then I, I, I look into myself, right? So it was a colonial process and then it became slowly decolonizing. Uh, and also, I mean, my process is, how would you say, a little different or unique uh, because it's not just, I mean, I, I always try to weave in collaborations between, you know, bring the archeologist to talk with the elderly or the linguist and uh, for example, Copan, a place in, in the, our place in Honduras, you know, we had uh, different people coming to visit the site. And so artists, etc. So it's all intersectional. And that is, I think, very 
that makes it very rich, right? When, uh, well, children too, right, are part of my work. And I mean, not only my own children, but, you know, workshops with ch children in format. And um, yeah. We so have two questions in the chat for you. Uh, one from Alita, one from Anna Karen. Um, Anna Karen is asking, um, uh, what is the first thing that you do when you get an idea for an art piece? Like what's your first step in the process when you get an idea? Hola, Ana Karen. ¿Qué tal? Well, welcome. Thank you for being here and everyone too. Uh, uh, well, I fir uh, the first thing I do is sometimes I talk to an elder these days, because it wasn't before like that. It was more looking to the books, right? More schooling. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, talk to uh, uh, an anthropologist friend and then talk to a linguist. And I start this process of just communicating with these people not, and very informally, not, you know, like meetings and things. Uh, or anything. And then uh, I start getting like, a, how would you say, uh, a whole picture of the picture. And, and that's when the creativity starts. And you're an artist, Anna Karen, so you know that's, you know, it's just you don't control it too much, right? <laughs> it just comes. But, you know, of course, that process starts, is, is, is a key part. And then also looking at the lines and uh, thinking about the intention behind every line in an ancestral drawing and thinking, uh, how can I respect that? And this comes to the other question of Melita. How can I respect that its integrity the most, but still make it my own and, and still- um, Maybe it, contemporary. Uh huh. Exactly, and truthful. Mm -hmm. So that's uh huh. Oh, that's a beautiful question mm -hmm. from Professor uh, Waldron. Mm. He asks, "What was your pro uh, process to find the balance between your spirituality, heritage, and your culture in your art? Um, this intersectionality is powerful. It is." Mm, thank you. Mm, well, I don't know. It's a process. <laughs> it's not, it wasn't a process. It is a process. It's present. And so, um, uh, yeah, I think uh, because I, I think the cosmovision is integral, right? It's not, we are not made of just one piece. We are multiple pieces and it's not just one drawer, right? And you pull out the drawer of being an artist and being uh, the uh, drawer of, you know, uh, growing your own food or whatever, or uh, the, the drawer of, um, you know, looking for the, the, the spiritual guide. It's all part of the same <laughs> because we are all, uh, related and on or through, you know, the lineage of our mother earth. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank um, you that. Something. I don't know if there's any other questions, but um, I just yeah. would like to start showing everybody the presentation uh, for the art pieces because we do have an art contest uh, and we got 12 submissions um, for the contest today. So, uh, let me open it really quick for you folks. It, um, um, I'm actually going to stop recording since, you know, I don't have permission from all the artists to record. So I'm going to stop the recording here. So for everyone to know that the next part is not recorded. All right. Um, so here I would like to start sharing in our presentation in number one. 